Hey guys, this is Exam Help, and today I'm going to look over the uh, structure of DNA. This is part of the AQA Biology AS course. So we're going to look at the how a DNA molecule is made up, what it contains, and what the function of DNA is, and how it's um, how it's made to complete these functions. I'm going to start off by looking at the structure of the monomers of the DNA. Polymer. We can kind of look at as DNA of a polymer because it's made up of lots of repeating units, and we'll have a look at the structure of these repeating units now. So then, the first part of the nucleotide, which is the polymer monomer, and um, that's the phosphate group. So this is uh, just the the circle here, this phosphate group, and then this deoxyribose is then covalently bonded here to the uh, phosphate group so the deoxyribose is just a pentose sugar and it's shown by this pentagon here and the deoxyribose and the organic base they're both then covalently, bo covalently bonded to the organic base so deoxyribose and phosphate covalently bonded together and then deoxyribose covalently bonded to the organic base so these lines here show the covalent bonds that are present phosphate, deoxyribose, deoxyribose, organic base. And the organic base can be one of the following four. So the organic bases present are the following four, cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thymine. And I put them in pairs like this for actually a reason. And that reason is that uh, these, when coming together in uh, the, the actual uh, molecule, as I'll show later, these will pair up together, cytosine and guanine, and then adenine and thymine will pair together. This is because cytosine is a single ring base, so it only have one ring. Then guanine, that's a double ring base, so it's going to have two rings. Then adenine is a double ring base, and thymine is a single ring base. So, when these pair up, guanine and cytosine will pair up, they'll form, basically, Three, ba uh, three rings in total and then adenine and thymine will pair up to form two, uh, three rings as well but say if we had cytosine and thymine pairing up that will only give two bases and adenine and guanine pairing up will give us four rings so that, that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be right because the parts of the pairing up it would either be too big or too small so, what happens with these nucleotides? Well, um, we have many, many, many of these nucleotides bonded together. And this is done in the following way. So you can see I shrunk the nucleotide that I made, and that's now pretty small, so we can't even read the writing there. But then this will bond to many other nucleotides, and I'll show you that here. So I've kind of got it so that we can see how they bond together. And then this kind of makes sort of one half of the double helix we know, the shape of DNA that we actually know. So what does it actually look like? Well, I'll show you. So what happens is this side is kind of flipped. So it's the opposite way around compared to this side. And these bases will pair up, as I've said, cytosine to guanine, adenine to thymine. And how will these pair up? Well, I'll show you. There are hydrogen bonds that form between them. So, I'll uh, kind of, I'll, I'll show you this. Um, what happens, I'll do, the, I'll do the hydrogen bonds in green. So the hydrogen bonds will form, that's definitely not green. Hydrogen bonds will form between the bases. So these hydrogen bonds, they're fairly weak in comparison to the uh, to the covalent bonds that are between the phosphate group and the deoxyribose. Um, just another piece of information. Notice how DNA. Um, uh, DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid. Deoxyribose is a sugar. So that's that just helps you remember 
what deoxyribose is called because it's the D part of the uh, DNA. So, these hydrogen bonds forming between the complementary bases. Notice how there's three hydrogen bonds here, but only two here. We know that guanine and cytosine, they'll form three hydrogen bonds, but only adenine and thymine will only form two. We don't really need to know that, but we just need to be aware that some uh, that some form three, some form two. So, what happens with this? We get a long chain, it goes on and on and on, on and on and on, and uh, it forms a really long, um, really long molecule. So we know the double helix shape. We get this long chain. These kind of form uh, the, the side bits of the ladder. But these bases and the hydrogen bonds, they kind of form the steps. So we kind of look at the DNA molecule as kind of a ladder rather than anything. Um, and we get the ladder and we twist the ladder to make the helix helical shape. So we know the structure of DNA now. So, how can this be related to the function of DNA? Well, for example, um, two separate strands here are formed by hydrogen bonds, are joined together by hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds, like I said, are fairly weak in comparison to covalent bonds. These covalent bonds here. Uh, hydrogen bonds are green, covalent bonds are black. So, because it's uh, so weak, um, how does this affect how easy they are to break apart? Well, say if we put a certain amount of energy in and broke these hydrogen bonds apart, I'll do that in a yellow. We broke these hydrogen bonds apart, they're now broken. Put a bit of energy in, they're now broken apart. If we put so much energy in, it's going to still be really difficult to break the, uh, the covalent bonds, so we're going to leave. We're going to leave um, this bit intact. We're going to leave this whole bit intact. But um, the hydrogen bonds are going to break apart. So these two are going to move apart. So what happens then? Well, uh, this means that during DNA, DNA replication, we only have one bit. So by having these weak hydrogen bonds between them, it makes it easier for DNA replication to occur. Also, as I've said, DNA is an extremely large molecule. So what does DNA actually do? It passes on genes from one generation to another. So it's going to have to have a lot of information in it. So because it's so long, it's going to contain a lot of these bases here. And bases are the coding for the DNA, as we're going to learn um, in my next video. DNA are the basis for the coding of uh, genes and such like. So, if it's going to hold a lot of bases, it's going to be able to hold a lot of information, and we're going to need a lot of information to actually create an organism. So that is good in that way as well. As well as this, having its helical structure, as I've just gone over, um, it's kind of protected the the coding part, the bases, they're kind of protected by this, uh, by the sides, the phosphate, um, phosphate deoxyribose, phosphate deoxyribose, etc. It's kind of protected by this from either chemical attack or otherwise physical forces. This kind of uh, keeps the bases intact from being destroyed. As well as that, um, it's a very stable molecule which means that it makes it easier to pass on from generation to generation. So there, that is uh, the structure of DNA. Um, so I've just gone over how what the nucleotide structures are, the nucleotide being the individual monomers here, the individual monomers. Um, so that's the nucleotide. We've looked at the DNA structure, how that's um, a polymer of the nu uh, nucleotides, how the adenine and guanine pair up, um, adenine and thymine pair up, cytosine and guanine pair up and we've also learned about the double helix shape and then we've just quickly gone over the function of DNA and how the uh, DNA molecule is adapted for its particular function. 
that was exam help and um, I hope that helped with your exams.